Hey everybody, this video is all about bi wiring and bi amping. What is it, how to do it, and is it really worth it? Let's get into it. Part of the thrill of being an audio enthusiast is the never ending journey for improved sound. Once you catch the bug and put together a decent home audio system or home theater system, the next step is to tweak and experiment with it. If you're at this point, you may have come across the terms by wiring and by amping. So let's talk about what each one of these means and how they may help improve your sound of your audio system. Now, both of these terms refer to how to connect to your speakers. And to do either one, you'll need speakers that allow you to connect them up this way. Now, if you want to determine whether or not your speakers can be bi-wired or bi-amped, just take a look at the back of your speakers where the speaker wires connect. Now, if you only see one positive and one negative connection that's usually red and black, your speakers are not capable of either one. If, however, you see two connections, you have speakers that can be bi-amped or bi-wired. Normally, these types of connections have jumpers, or also called bridges, that connect the two positive terminals and the two negative terminals. If your speakers are set up this way, it's worth testing out. All right, let's start by looking at bi-wiring. There's a lot of debate as to how and whether bi-wiring truly works. Most high-performance speaker manufacturers offer it on their better speakers, but there are a handful who don't believe it works and don't offer any extra connections. Many people hear an improvement in clarity and resolution. The sound also seems to be more precise in three-dimensional space. We'd love to hear your comments on what you've heard when you tried bi-wiring. Leave us a comment below and let us know. First, let's explain the premise behind bi-wiring. Every speaker has a crossover on the inside of the speaker. Using a two-way speaker as an example, the job of the crossover is to send the high frequencies through to the tweeter, but filter out the low frequencies. It also does the same thing for the woofer in the opposite way, filtering out the higher frequencies and letting through the lower ones. A crossover is a very important part of the speaker and has a pretty big impact on how well it works. If your speakers are set up for bi-wiring, those separate connections on the back lead to different connections at the crossover, which keep the bass and the mid-range and treble sections separate. The bass driver, or woofer, in your speaker moves thousands of times more distance than the mid-range or the treble drivers do. Now, the theory is that this movement creates magnetic energy that gets back into the speaker cable. So, imagine that you're a small treble frequency. Would you rather swim up a wire that has all kinds of magnetic ripples and force coming from the woofer, or swim up a wire that is smooth with no resistance? When you buy wire, you separate out those connections. That is the theory of why buy wiring could be beneficial. It affects the high frequency part of the crossover, but will not have any impact on the bass response. So to bi-wire your speakers, first remove those jumpers and use two sets of speaker cables. At the speaker end, they will separate, and at your receiver or amplifier end, they will typically be joined together. Some higher performance amplifiers even have two sets of speaker connections to make it easier to connect things up. It is important that you use identical cables. They should be the same brand, model, and the exact same length. Here we have taken some basic speaker cable and modified it to be bi-wired by combining the amp end and separating the cables at the speaker end. As with any speaker connections, make sure they are all solid and tight and confirm that the positive is not touching the negative side in any way. If you are using bare wire, even a tiny stray strand of wire touching the wrong terminal can eventually damage and blow up your amp. Of course, using wire that is properly pre-terminated is your best bet. This is an example of some pre-terminated AudioQuest cable that was purposely built for bi-wiring. All right, now let's talk about bi-amping, which you may have guessed is the next logical step after bi-wiring. To bi-amp, you have to bi-wire. Bi-amping, however, takes things one step further by using a separate amplifier for the bass connection at your speaker and another one for the treble connection. First, let's talk about passive bi-amping. Passive bi-amping is what you typically see when bi-amping is discussed. It's the most common. With passive bi-amping, you are still using the crossover parts of your speaker to send the correct frequencies to each speaker driver. The great news is, is that many of the newer home theater receivers have added an option that allows you to passively bi-amp. 
This makes use of a spare set of amp channels if you're not using all of them for your surround speakers. Now, here's an example of a receiver that will let us passively buy amp. You'll have to configure the receiver in its settings for buy amping, and the connection scheme will vary depending on your unit, but this is definitely something to try if you have the spare channels. If you have separate audio components, you can also buy amp using two identical power amps, but we don't feel this is the best way to spend your money on improving your system. You can also buy amp with an active system. Now, this isn't very common, and it's only available with a limited number of brands. With an active system, you actually have a separate electronic crossover in front of your two or three amps. This gives each amp the correct set of frequencies, and you can remove the crossover from the speakers. With this method, you can get away with slightly different amps as the crossover itself has level adjustments on it to balance out any differences. But you will need separate power amplifiers and an electronic crossover for this method. You can't do it with an old stereo receiver or integrated amps. Also, very few speakers on the market allow you to actively buy amp. All right, now that you hopefully understand buy wiring and buy amping a little bit more, which will give you the biggest bang for the buck? There's no question about it, it's buy wiring. You simply need a pair of speakers capable of it and two identical sets of speaker wires. If you have a great home theater, don't forget about the ultra important center channel speaker. Most high performance center channel speakers have connections for buy wiring. If your receiver is set up for buy amping, we'd suggest you give it a try. Just like with buy wiring, the only cost is the cables, and this will usually improve things a bit more. As far as adding another power amp to a separate space system to passively buy amp, we don't feel like that's the best investment. If your current power amp is big enough, you are probably better off with the speaker upgrade. We hope this gives you a better understanding of buy wiring and buy amping as you continue on your journey to improve your sound. We would love to hear your comments, so please let us know down below. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. Thanks for watching.